So tonight we are talking about files. Um, files are where you store data. It's that simple. What we have done up till now when it has dealt with, when we dealt with data, is we have only had the data in a transient form. And by that I mean once someone types it in and it's used in the program and that program stops, the data no longer exists. It's gone into the ether. Um, but we want a way of persisting the data. We want that data to live outside of when the program is actually running. And to do that, we have to store things in files. And a file is just a collection of data on a disk, takes up space, and has a name. That's all a file is. And Python is really, really good at dealing with files and dealing with file systems. One of the reasons I like Python is because I don't have to know how the operating system handles files for my program to get to that file. Python will do the navigation with the operating system for me and I can just use the functionality that Python provides to access a file. So there are um, two things you can do with a file. You can read it and you can write it. That's it. That's all you can do with a file. Um, that doesn't sound like a lot, but those two actions actually encompass a whole lot of stuff. Um, to read a file or write a file, you have to start by opening the file. And this is akin to, if you click Microsoft Word, the Word document opens. If you click a text editor, the text document opens. That is the process of allowing access into the file. Um, and what that does is it actually opens something they talk, let's see. Um, well, they're not really talking about file descriptors. Sorry, I went too deep. Um, so you have to open a file. Once you've opened the file, you can read the file and write the file. And you always have to close a file. Now I'm going to harp on this in the next hour about closing a file. Why is it important to close a file? Well, you only have so many um, available calls to open that you're allowed to do on any given file system. So there's a finite number of times you can open files. The only way you can open more than that number is by closing them. So you really have to manage what's opened and what's closed. So it's always important when you're done with a file to close it. That's reason one. Reason two is if you're writing a file, not all of the contents will be written to disk until you close that file. So if you neglect to close the file and the program ends, the file might not have all the data in it that you expect it to have. So two reasons to always close a file. So we can open a file, we can close a file, we have to manage the files. Um, let's see. Let's just talk about opening. So these are just some uh, some programs. Whoops, I'm sorry, I forgot to create my interpreter. Uh, there we go. Okay. So what we have here is just a really simple Python script. I am port OS. OS is just the module, like any other module. And we're going to be importing a couple of modules in this lecture. And I'm going to try and open a file that's not really there. I'm going to stat the file to create it. That's not the only way to create a file, but that's a way in a program to create a file. Then I'm going to print some info, and I'm going to print what's in my file, and I'm going to close it, and then I'm going to remove it. That's kind of the life cycle of a file. So if 
I will step through in the debugger and look over here under this files directory. Because what you're going to see is you're going to see not really there.txt be created. So I'm going to debug this. And is there a problem? I think I have a bug. Yep, I have a bug. I don't know what that's for. Wait a minute. Oh, sorry about that. Not what we wanted. Yes, funny. I did not set my thing correctly. Okay. Do I have any other things open? No, I don't have any other things open that shouldn't be open, and I'm not looking at the wrong file. So now let's try this again, now that I'm running the right file. So I am about to open a file. Now if we look over here, there's nothing called not really there. And you'll see that there is an issue with that, as there should be. If I go to the console, it says, hey, there's no file called not really there. So this is an error. And these are more complex errors than we're used to seeing because we're doing more complex operations. So right here, it says file not found error. No such file or directory. That's OK. So I'm going to comment that out because that has served its purpose. I'm going to stop. I'm going to debug again. So now I'm going to stat it. That just is, allows me to create an empty file. And if I go to the console, oh, this one is very, making me unhappy. OK, I obviously didn't test this enough tonight. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create. I'm going to create a file. New file. Not really. Txt. So I just created a file. So let's go back to this guy. Uh, Read.py and try this again. OK, I'm at line two. I have a file. And I'm going to go into the debugger, by the way. Sorry about that. I know I should have made that bigger. And you will see this thing called my file down here. And it's a text I.O. wrapper. I.O. just means input output. Text just means that it's assuming this is a text file. I have a buffer. OK, and I, all I did was call open. And I've got all of this. Um, so the buffer is just a place in memory that information that the data from the file is going to be read into is kind of like a temporary holding area. And for the files we're using, we don't need temporary holding areas. But for huge files, you do. You do not want to read a huge file into memory. Um, it tells you what the codings are, errors. Um, closed is important. Right now it's not closed, and that's OK. Um, so all of this I got for calling open. And you'll notice when I called open, I gave it a file name. And in this case, I gave it a directory and a file name. So this is the files directory in my project. And then this is the not really there.txt file. So if I do an info stat, I will get a lot more information about my file. Okay. This is all of the stuff, all kinds of stuff about the file, including the length of the contents of the file. So a lot of this is stuff that you don't need right now, but it's important to understand that you can get information about a file by simply calling stat. I'm going to print the info. It's going to look like a lot of info. That's just the info from the file. I'm going to print my file.read. 
Reed says, read, read everything in the file. Just give me all the information in the file. And it will come in as a string, just like everything that you input into Python, a Python script while it's running. Everything in this, in, when you read everything in from a file, it's a string and you have to convert it if you need it to be an integer or float or a Boolean. So I read my file and none of this has changed. It's all the same. Now I'm going to close my file. So let's look at my file after I close it. Well, first of all, my bad. From the read, this is what I get. Figment of your imagination. So it did open the file. It read information from the file. And it, I was able to print it out to the screen. So now I'm going to close the file. I go down here. Closed is true. And then I'm going to actually remove the file, which is why this didn't start working. Now, remove the file removes it from the file system. It's gone now. So that's kind of the life cycle of a file. The important thing here is we opened a file, we read the file, and we closed the file. Um, You can iterate over the lines of a file using in. Just like over a list you can use in, you can do that over a file. And it's very handy. That's what it's showing us here. And basically you open a file and you say for line, line is just a variable name, in f. This f is a file pointer. You've got to have it when you're accessing the file. It is the variable that is created when you call open. And if you do that in a for loop using in, you can get, sorry, you can get um, each line of a file. When you say the file is gone, do you mean you deleted it completely? Yes, Chris, Christian. I deleted in this example, this OS remove deleted that file completely. It's gone from that directory. So closing it just closed my access to it. Removing it remove, deleted it from the directory. So um, like I said, close, I no longer have access to it. The, the variable I created with that file pointer goes away. Delete it, removes it. And so there's two different things. There's closing the file, and there's removing the file from the file system. Closing the file just means your Python doesn't have access to it anymore. Removing the file from the file system is akin to you putting it into a trash can that there is no way to take it out of. Whoops. My bad. Picked the wrong thing. Okay. So you, we're here in this example. We're opening a file and we're using four. And I just wanted to introduce that concept quickly because it's important sometimes when you have a file with a lot of lines and you just want to do something line by line by line. Writing files. So we just learned to open them for reading. Writing them uses the right function, okay? I still have to open a file, but when I open the file, I have to use a flag. And that flag can tell me I can write it, I can read it, I can append it. Those are the three things I can do with file open. In this case, I'm going to write it. And then I write something to the file, and then again, I close the file. Now, with writing, closing is more important than reading. You always should close it. But some people close their files, and their files aren't complete the way they thought they would be. And that's because, sorry, some people don't close their files. And when they exit the program and they go in to look at that file, they realize that things aren't, everything's not in the file. And that can happen, actually, 
in uh, one of the longer programs you're going to write for the labs, you've got to make sure that you close that file so that everything is written into where Zybooks has that file holding area. Because if you don't, the next part of the program isn't going to be right. So close is important. So let's go down here and look at writing a file. So um, there is a file. Um, let's just do this for right now. Let me make this bigger so people can see it. OK, so I've got a variable called my file. I know it's a variable. It's on the left-hand side of single equal sign. I'm using the open function. If I didn't say this before, open is a function that just comes with Python. Python gives us the ability to do this. We don't have to add, ask for any specific privileges or import anything. I have a directory called files. And um, in that directory, I have a file called try to write it.txt. And I'm going to open it for writing. And opening it for writing means that I'm just going to write to the file. So if I open try to write it dot text, writing to my first file again, writing to my first file again. Well, let's see what happens. That's got data in it. So let's see what happens when I open it for writing. And I'm going to put a star in front of this so that it, it's different than the information that's in there. So if I go to read, sorry, write, write.py, and I debug this, OK? So I'm just going to step over. I can see here in the debugger, I've opened my file. I've got all the wonderful little stuff. And now I'm going to write to it. So I'm going to step over it again. And now I'm going to close it. Now previously when we looked at this file, there was nothing with stars in it. And now we have this line with stars. So when we first looked at it, it says, writing to my first file again, again. And then that was repeated, writing to my first file again, again. But what this tells me is that when I open it for writing, any data that's previously in this file is going to go away. OK, it blanks out the file, it empties it out, and then it starts writing anew. And that's great if you want to clean out the file and start writing. But what do we do if we just want to add to an existing file? Well, 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 to do that, we use A. So here I use W. I, I gave it the name of the file. And then the other argument was a W for writing. I can also use A for appending. And it will, let's just put XXX, writing to my first file. So I can use A, and it will not erase everything in the file. So if I debug this again, Oh, I didn't actually stop because I didn't move my breakpoint. That's OK. And if I go here, you'll see that I have XXX writing to my first file again and again. So append allows you to add information to the end of the file, while write overwrites the entire file. If you just use write, then um, it's going to clear out the file. Now, another question I get sometimes is, well, why didn't I use something here? In this file open, I didn't put a W. I didn't put an A. That is because the default behavior for the open function is to read a file. So, um, or I think it's RW. R is, read is the default. And W and the A, what do you mean by there? Are they already set by Python, Christian? Uh, 
Okay, so I'll wait for you to put that in there. I'm going to continue on. Oh, there we go. Um, can you use different letters? You can use W, you can use A, and you can use R. Those are the three letters that you can use. That's it. If you put anything else in there, Python's not going to know what to do with it. So it's A, R, and W. Append, read, write. Okay. So, um, and you can write multiple different files. That's what this example here shows, is that um, you open it for writing, and then you're writing and writing and writing. Every time you call write, it's going to place that data in the file. But you'll also notice that it did not put a new line in here. There is no new line because I didn't tell it to put a new line. So if you're thinking about formatted files, you're going to have to think about new lines and tabs and spaces. Um, okay. Okay, here are three modes for up opening files. Read, write, and append. And this matrix tells you what it does. Um, if you're opening it for reading, you cannot write, you cannot create the missing file, you cannot overwrite the file. Um, write allows you to write and create a missing file and overwrite a file. Append does allow to write and create a missing, but you can't overwrite a file. So those are the three modes for open. Flushing a file. This is just a note. If you are in a large program and you're doing a lot of stuff, and it can be even handy in one of the labs tonight. You can flush the file. You can flush data to a file. Because when we're writing to a file in Python, we're not actually writing to the disk. Writing to disk is one of the most expensive operations you can do on a computer, on any computer. It takes the most time to do that. That's what I mean by expensive. Um, so Python, so some program, some languages will do it automatically, some won't. For Python, it will hold it in a buffer in memory until it thinks it has enough data, and then it will take that big chunk of data and it will write it to disk. And then it will go and wait for the next big chunk and it will write it to disk. And that's very efficient and helps speed things up, but it's not always what you want to happen. So sometimes you want to force Python to write whatever is in that buffer that's waiting around out to the file. And you do that using the function flush. So basically you're saying, hey Python, whatever you stored up in your own little buffer, that's great, but write it to the file. Just write it right now. Um, and that that's important sometimes if there is a potential where um, you're in a situation where something catastrophic might happen to the computer and you have to make sure things are on that file system, there are often reasons to flush the files. And also, and you won't need this tonight, but it's good to know, you can also open it and say how big of a buffer you want. Now, we don't need that in this class, but it's good to know that you can do that. All right, interacting with the file system. Yes. Does it time out or wait forever or does it depend on OS facilitates? Do you mean the flush? If you're asking about the flush, the flush doesn't time out. The buffer doesn't time out. The buffer will sit there and wait around as long as the program is running. Once the uh, program stops running, the buffer goes away. But that's also why you need to close the file because when you close the file, the buffer goes away, so you're not holding this extra memory around um, because you haven't done good file management. So that's really what happens to the buffer. Okay, so you saw me import OS, and there is a way to interact with the file system because it's important sometimes. Sometimes you want to do file management other than reading and writing and appending. Sometimes you want to um, 
get information about the file, which we already saw in STAT. Sometimes you want to create a file. Sometimes you want to remove a file. Those all can be done by using the OS module. And basically, OS just stands for operating system. And it provides an interface to the operating system that is not operating system dependent. So I can take the Python program that I was writing yesterday on a Linux system. As long as I have the same version of Python, I can take that and put it on my Windows system and run it. And it will interact with the operating system the same way. Whereas a programming language like C and C++, you're much closer to the operating system. And you may actually have to change your code if you move it from a Linux machine to a Windows machine. For Python, this OS module does everything you need it to do. You do not have to worry about which operating system it's interacting with. It simply will do it for you. So, and this diagram right here is just showing you how Python interpreter is kind of a buffer for that. Um, I was just talking about portability. They talk about portability here. Python's a very portable language. Um, and it's very important to remember that because there are times when you may have to choose which language you're going to do it in. And if you have a choice between a portable language and a language that's less portable, you really need to look deep down and see what are the other features of that type of language. You can make things go really streamingly fast in C and C++, probably faster than you ever will in Python. But do you need the portability that a language like Python gives you? So when you're a programmer, those are some of the things that you will need to evaluate. Um, okay, these are just some things you can do with OS. Oh, and they're talking about the path separator. Path separators can be a little bit of a pain. Um, and so whether it's a forward slash or backward slash, i.e. you're on Linux or Mac or Windows, you have to be careful of that. Um, don't hard code the file paths. Allow um, allow Python to do the joining. So this OS path.join takes care of whether or not it's a forward slash or backslash because Windows has one type of slash and Linux has another. Um, allow Python to do the, to create a dynamic file path so that you don't have to worry about the, the, the direction of the slash. Um, okay, let's see. You can do really cool things like walking a directory tree. Um, again, this is all Python allows you to do this so you don't have to worry about um, which operating system you're on. Binary data. Okay, so there, what we've dealt with so far is text. Can OS module Python access files outside of the current working directory from where the script project is running? Yes, it can. So I could give, I could give, where was it? Is it this? I could give this a path. I could use subdir and I could have it agnostic to the file system and I could give it a complete path starting at the root of the operating system and have it open the file. As long as you have a path to the file and you have permissions, your, your program has permissions to get to that file, you will be able to open, read, write, anything on the file system. No problem. Okay. So binary data, what we've seen so far is all text data. Everything we have worked with in this class is text data. By text data, it means I can read it, okay? It is completely human readable. I don't have to worry about it. I know I can open up a file and look in it. But there are other ways 
to store data. One of those ways is using binary data. And it's not really human readable. It's not something that you can read. Now, is there an advantage to it? Yeah, there can be an advantage to using um, to using binary data. It can be more compact. Maybe you don't want your information humanly readable. And binary data is just the first step in kind of obfuscating information in files. Um, and there's a way to work with this, and there is this little B operator. So what this, what this B in front of this string does tells Python, hey, this is really, I want this as bytes. I don't want it as a string. It's not really a string. It's bytes. And um, Python will do that, and what you will see is a bunch of escape, sequence, escape sequences. That's what they are. They are the encoded ASCII characters. So if I go to, where is it, bytes, whoops, bytes, right here, this is an example of what they're talking about. So I have a variable called my bytes. And I'm going to put a B in front of the string, and that turns this is my bytes into a binary. So let's go to this one. Go to bytes. There's bytes, there's bytes. And we'll debug this. Okay? So I am here, and I'm going to step over. My bytes, you will see in the debugger that my bytes is of type bytes and it's 20. Now, PyCharm is really nice because it's going to keep, in the debugger, it's going to keep this for the information for us as long as it can in a human readable way. So I'm going to step over my bytes. Console says it's a type byte, so I know it's a type byte. And I print my bytes, and I get that. And then you'll see the difference with a string. So this is a string. The type is stir. And you'll have my stir. So that's what bytes are. And when you write them to a file, you will get the, the encoded sequence for um, the file. And when you are opening a binary file, you have to use RB. So if you have a file, you know it's binary. B means convert it from being binary to being human readable. So that's what the binary mode does. So you can read and write binary files. You don't want people to see what's in them. Um, so, okay, this is just the contents of a bitmap. So in this case, what we're seeing here, this image we're seeing, looks like a ball on FireDot. Ball.bmp is really a binary file because this is what you will see inside the file. You won't see, if you look at the bitmap, you won't see a ball on fire. You'll see all this hexadecimal escaped stuff. That's because we need a program that interprets the contents of this file to show us the burning ball. Um, a lot of, in fact, pretty much all imagery files are some kind of um, binary file, JPEG, JPEG 2000, TIFF, GIF. So, you have to, if you're going to start working with um, more complex file types in the future, you need to understand what binary is and how to use it. Um, command line arguments and files. Okay. So, sorry, I'm trying to make this bigger. It's not cooperating right now. There we go. 
So you can use command line arguments to um, to give yourself a file name. It doesn't have to be hard coded. You can simply input the name of a file, or you can use it with sys.argv, which are the arguments that you pass when you type something in on the command line. Now we don't really do that that much in this class because Zybooks does it for us, or we we enter it in the console in PyCharm. But if you're actually running this from a console window, uh, you would use you could very well use arguments. And arguments are just you type Python, you type the name of the Python file, and then you type things afterwards. And you have to interpret what to do with them. But that's what they mean by you can put it in as a command line argument. It's just you're adding the name of the file to the command line argument, and you're reading it. And then you can check to see if the file exists, and read it and write it as normal. The with statement. This is a really handy thing, OK? So and one of the reasons it's really handy is because it closes it for you. Um, it's usually used with reading, but you can also use it with writing. Um, with open, so with is a keyword. Open is the function name. You give it the name of the file and what you want to do, and then it's as. And then whatever the variable is, so in this case, like my file would be a variable name. And then you're going to act on it. And it's really nice because you can read through all the lines of a file and um, act on every line in that file. And it really is very, very handy. I use with open all the time. Um, and, and let's see, I think I have an example here. So we're going to have with. OK, this is just a quick, small file that shows how handy with is. So we're going to do with. Going to make this bigger. So we have with is the keyword. I'm calling the open function. I'm having, I'm telling it to use many lines.txt for writing as, and my variable name is f. By the way, it's like anything else. You have to end it with a colon. So if I look at many lines.txt, I have four lines in here. Line one, line two, line three, line four. They're just text. So I'm going to put a breakpoint here. I'm going to debug it. So what happens when I'm on this with open line? If I look at the debugger right now in my variables, I have nothing. If I step over this one single line of code, all of a sudden I have a text pointer. It's not closed. And what I can do is I can now read the line. So I have FL file line is F dot read lines. And then for line in FL, I can print the line. So if I step over this again and I look at FL, I in fact get a list of all the lines in the file. And this is very handy because this is in fact a list. That's what it gave me back. So FL is a list and it just contains all the lines in the file. Note that it also contains new lines. So there may be characters in there that I don't want that I'm going to have to get rid of at some point in time. But basically now I can just go over each line of the file, and when I'm done, it automatically closes the file for me. If you use with open, you do not have to remember to close the file. Python does it for you, and it makes me happy because I'm one of those people who sometimes forget to close their file. Comma separated value files. This is very important because you have a lab for this tonight. And it's also a way to store a lot of data in kind of a small place. Comma separated value files are basically matrices. They're rows and columns, just like you would see in Excel. And if you um, think back to lists, when we did multi-dimensional lists, comma separated value files are just kind of like multi-dimensional lists. 
They are text files usually. They have com well, they are text files. They have commas that separate the values and new lines that separate the rows. So this is a row, this is a row, name is a cell, HW1 is a cell, HW2 is a cell, 78 is, excuse me, 78 is a cell. So that's what a comma separated value line is. And you can structure them any way you want. The important part is that they have a delimiter. A delimiter is just something that says, okay, stop at this point and, and separate. So separate the thing to the left of a comma from the thing to the right of the comma because they're completely separate and I want them to be treated as separate. So that's what a, a delimiter is. And then you could have a colon delimiter, you can have a space delimiter, you can have a semicolon delimiter. Comma separated value files have comma delimiters. The nice thing about it is there's a CSV module in Python. And the CSV module does a lot of the stuff for us. So we're not having to do a lot of the manual manipulation of a CSV file. So we would import CSV and then we can use our with open and we can have a CSV reader. Because it's a CSV file, we might have to do something special with it. So to do that, we're going to use a reader provided by the CSV module to read in the file and in this case, give us a list or a list of lists. And you give it the CSV file variable and you give it the delimiter. The delimiter in this case is a comma. And then you can just roll through it like a list. So if we open up CSV, and do I have that? Oh, it's right there. Okay. Just making sure I have the file on that one. So if we CSV, okay, cancel, what am I doing? Okay, cancel. Okay, they already did it. So if I look at this, what am I doing? I'm doing colon delimited. My apologies. But we'll do this right now, and you can just see that you can use any delimiter. So I have a file called colon delimited. And instead of commas, which is probably a bad choice on my part, I'm using colons. So my separator is a colon, so between A and B, there's a colon between B and C, there's a colon between C and D, there's a colon. It's just a separator. It can be anything you like. And here what I'm doing is I'm going to import the CSV module. I'm going to open up colon delimited dot, delimited dot txt using the width capability. I'm going to open it as CSV file. CSV file is just the name of a variable. You could have called it X. I called it CSV file. I'm going to have a variable called alphabet that is going to use the CSV reader function. And by the way, this is the name of the module. This is the name of the function in the module. I'm going to say with the CSV file and this delimiter, read all the lines in it and send me back a list called alphabets, and then I'm just going to print alphabets. So if I debug this, now by import CSV, I get a whole bunch of functionality that I don't even have to know about. Um, I'm on the debugger. If I step over, uh, you can see that I have opened this. It's got a text wrapper. It's called colon delimited. Um, we get all of the same stuff. It's open for reading. Now I'm going to read in on line four the contents of the file. And I do that and I get this, uh, where did alphabets go? Uh, 
Wait a minute. Did the program end? Hold on. Hmm. I think that's my bad. I think this should be, I'm going to fix this really quick. I don't know why I changed that to colons. I wasn't thinking, obviously. We're going to make this comma separated value real quick. I'm going to change this to this. I'm going to try running this again. Stop and rerun. Okay. What did I do wrong? CSV, import CSV. I wonder if I don't have the module in here. Partially initialized module CSV has no attribute reader. Most likely do the circular import. Well, I did not do a circular import. I'm going to try this one more time. Yep, there's something wrong with, with the way this file was loaded. There is no circular import in import.csv. I probably just have something not set up right in PyCharm. So I'll fix this before I put it up on the YouTube channel. But basically, all I was showing you is that you could read in a CSV file. You will have to do this tonight for, or this weekend, for one of your labs. Um, so this is, when you read in the CSV file, this is what it looks like. And, um, yeah, and you just read it rows and columns. It can be a, um, it's, it's like a, um, a nested list. So word frequencies. So I am going to open up my, the, uh, where are they? Here they are. I should have opened them up before. Open. Okay. So here are the, um, Here are the, the, the um, pseudocode for the lab. So the first one is word frequencies. And word frequencies basically are you, are, you have an input 1.csv that they're going to provide. The contents of it are just a big, long, comma-separated value list. And they want you to go through each and every word and tell tell you how many times that word occurs. So in this case, hello occurs once. Now you may be looking at this list and say, but I see hello twice. Well, remember, Python is case sensitive, so capital H hello is different than a lowercase h hello. But you've got two cats, you've got a couple of dogs. So that's what this lab wants you to do. So it's about opening the CSV file using the CSV module and the CSV reader, and then using that content, remember it's just a list when it comes in, to, um, to determine the word frequencies. So you're going to import CSV, which is um, when you're talking about importing modules, we first talked about that in 1.7. So you're going to set the file name to whatever the user inputs the file name to. You're going to set the word list to an empty list. So you're going to just create an empty list. And then, and I put the box around this because this is where you want to use the with open. But from a pseudocode perspective, that really isn't what you're supposed to do. So basically, I'm here saying you open the CSV file for reading. And then while it's open, you're going to read the lines in from the CSV file. But the little bubble over here says 7.6 with. So you want to use with open here. And then basically you're going to um, check to, sorry, you're going to set user file to the, the um, sorry, my brain is frying. 
You're going to set user file to the results of CSV reader and you're going to go through a nested for loop and you're going to go for row, a column, and then you're going to determine um, if the word is not, the value of row in index is not in the word list, you're going to output um, the word and you're going to append to the row list. So that is how you do that. Now the next one is really long. We're going to um, review it really quick. Anybody have any questions? Nope. Oh, it's just you and me, Christian. Oh, and Casey, sorry. I thought I heard someone leave. Um, so 7.9 is a lot longer, okay? So you're sorting TV shows. You're going to use lists and dictionaries, and this is kind of good practice for the project. And you're going to input a file, and that file is going to have a number followed by a word, number followed by word. And basically what that is, is um, so sorry. So this is the name of the TV show and um, the number of seasons. So you're going to have the number of seasons followed by the TV show, the number of seasons followed by the TV show. And what you want to do is you want to order it with by the number of seasons and then the TV show. So you're going to input things from file.txt, so you're going to open a file for reading. You're going to read in all the contents. You're going to sort that, sort that somehow, and then you're going to output it to outputkeys.txt. And the output file will contain, um, oh, is it just, sorry. Sort the dictionary key, grace place, and output the results to a file name output, separating the multiple TV shows associated with the same key with a semicolon. Next, sort the dictionary values by alphabetical order and output the results to a file named output.txt, output titles. So you're going to be two outputs, sorry. There's output keys, which has in them sorted by the seasons, and then you're going to have output titles, where you just have the titles sorted alphabetically. So this is a lot of work, so let's take a look at what we have. So the first part of this is about opening and reading the information in appropriately because it's not going to just come in as a dictionary. You need it to be a dictionary, but it's not going to come in as a dictionary. So you're going to have to organize the data once you read it. So you're going to get, you know, you're going to... Um, Get the input, you're going to open a file, you're going to create a couple of placeholders. You're going to create an empty dictionary, you're going to create an empty list, and you're going to create a second empty list with that is the list split. Here's just some comments about what we're doing. And then for index in the length of the output list, you're going to be going through this based on the index. Um, you're going to create an internal temporary list to this, um, this outer for loop. And so what you're going to do is you're basically going to um, potentially put things in this temp list. So first, you're going to say your list object is equal to the output list of index. you got to remember to move, remove the new line. 2.10 will show you how to remove the new line. Um, also, you're going to have to look at two things at once. That's where this index plus one comes in. So you want to look at the first line and the second line almost as a unit and say, all right, the first line I know is going to be the number of seasons and the second line is going to be the title. Um, and then you're going to convert um, the list object to an integer. So you're going to convert that first number, which is the seasons, into an integer. And then you're going to make sure that it's not already in the dictionary. And you're going to append it. And um, you're going to have to make sure, otherwise you're going to have to remove the new line and append it. 
then we get into the first set of sorting. So once you've got your dictionary, you're going to sort it. And there's this great little function called sorted that Python gives you. You just have to remember that the um, output of sorted is a brand new dictionary. So you're going to have to remember to set a variable. In this case, it's called sorted my dict to my dict. And then you're going to um, so you're going to um, set a new variable for just the keys to um, sorted my dict. And there's several approaches to creating a dictionary is what you want to look at here to do that. All right, so now we're going to have to change from a dictionary to a list. So I'm doing that by, by just using a 4x in keys of my dictionary. And 2.2 .2 is basically going to show you how to do that in terms of appending to your dictionary. Um, and here's something important. It's dot keys, all right? 4x in the keys of my dict dot keys. Dot keys is what gets you the diction, is what gets you the keys of the dictionary. I shouldn't have put it like that, but. Um, so you want to split the list of lists into a single list. You're going to do that in this one. And then you're going to show the list split, and that gives you the first output. So we've done all of that work before we've even gotten to the first output. So now we're going to um, open a file called output keys for writing and we're going to say for each key and value in the sorted dictionary of keys we're going to convert the key to a string we're going to write the key plus a colon to the file and then for each item in value and remember this is slice so this is common slicing so if you're not sure what that colon minus one does there's the slicing and then you're going to write the item plus semicolon to the file and the value to the file and the new line to the file and then you will have a single line. And then you're going to close it, close F. And this close will write to, will flush the buffer. Then I'm going to have another file which is output titles and I'm going to say for item in show list split, write the item plus a new line and then close. So just remember, there's a lot of work that's going on on the read part here. All of this is about getting the um, file read in to the appropriate format so that you can work with it. That's half of the program. This is, that is half of this problem. So go over this section especially carefully and understand um, what it is you need to do. So does anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, I should, okay, thanks, Christian. I should have this up tomorrow um, on the YouTube channel, and I will send out an announcement to my class and an announcement to the other professors. And I hope everyone has a good evening. So I'm going to uh, stop the recording.